Hello again and welcome. In the last video we were looking at this Fluke 77 that I pulled out of the dumpster. A few of you offered suggestions on what to do with the meter before I return it to the dumpster. One person had asked about life cycling this wafer switch. Unfortunately this meter is quite old and you know the switch is used. You can see it already has a fair bit of wear on it. it hasn't actually wore through the plating yet but with the age of the meter that would definitely come into play. The other problem is, again, this thing came from the dumpster. All I have is the circuit board. We don't have the case. So you can see, again, I've got this piece of rubber tubing here with a standoff in the middle. And that's how I'm turning it. But without that additional support, I'd be concerned that we may actually damage the switch where it may normally hold up much better. If I had the case for this meter, I'd run that test. Another person had asked about running an ESD test, actually specifically they were talking about that piezo grill starter and I have no problems running that test, of course we're going to have to repair the meter first. Again what had failed is this resistor, so this is the resistor from the meter, so if we look at the resistance with the Bryman, you can see it's an open. So this will have to be replaced, if we look at the schematic for this particular meter. This is the resistor that we're talking about, R1. You can see it's marked 1K2 watt wire wound. R1 is a fusible resistor to ensure safety. Use the exact replacement only. Again, I'm not really too concerned about safety. Here I have a standard 2 watt resistor. I could easily put this resistor in place of this one. Uh, you can see physically they're the same size. Of course, this is not a fusible safety resistor. Of course, you can still buy fusible resistors. You can get these through DigiKey, Mauser, I'm sure several other distributors. But I think what I'd like to do is try to run some other tests with this meter. This would be the part that I'd like to use. Again, this is a flame-proof surge rated resistor. I've ran tests on these particular resistors before in the past. This is one of my multimeter simulator boards that I built up to test the clamps. In this case, you can see I have some small clamps down here that I'm trying to evaluate. So I have a fair bit of experience using these particular parts. So let's go ahead, we'll replace this resistor and let's test out the meter and see if it still functions. All right, so here you can see I've replaced our 1K ohm resistor. I've stood this up quite a ways off the board. And that's because assuming the meter is still functional and it survives this piezo grill starter, I would like to run a couple of additional tests with it. So let's just go ahead and see if this thing works. Again, for this, we'll just be using our little test box here. And let's just start with the AC volts mode. This should be roughly two and a half volt. This should be roughly 70 volts. Let's switch it over to DC. This should be roughly 60. This should be roughly two and a half. And this should be five. Looks fine. This should be roughly 20 millivolts. Let's just try it with a dead short. Looks fine. This will be 50 ohms. Looks good. This will be 100 ohms. Looks good. This is a 1K ohm. It's a 10K ohm. 100K. 1 meg and 10 meg. Looks good. Let's switch it over to diode check. And this is with the leads open. Single white LED. Let's try it with a single silicon diode. And this is two in series. So it appears that the meter is functional. Alright, so here I have our piezo grill starter or PZO as I would like to call it. And I think what I'm going to do is try this in all the modes of the meter except for the current, just like I would normally run a typical meter. And then I'll go ahead and invert the polarity and we'll repeat the test. So this is going to be five transients. If I can get our gun on here. Let's just see. That might be the end of it right there. Let's just see if it'll recover. Nope. So that's damaged it right there. All 
and we can try to remove the battery but I doubt it's going to recover yep so nope that permanently damaged it so there you have it what I was hoping to do was actually try to make this meter a little more robust and see if we could transient test it at higher levels so this is the schematic for this particular meter this meter has got a lot of issues for example uh, you know they have this large HRC fuse here and then this small glass filled one these two fuses are actually in series and then the 10 amp shunt they don't have any fuse on so you can see the trace right here where it wires directly onto the shunt and you can see that in the schematic like here's the 10 amp input here's the common it just goes straight through the shunt and back you wouldn't expect this from fluke but you know it's an early meter they probably didn't know better and here you can see we have this 3 amp 600 volt large HRC fuse and then this 630 milliamp 250 volt fuse my guess is they knew that uh, without this large fuse in here this fuse alone may not be able to break the fault current again for cat 2 I think that could be upwards of about 10 kiloamps in the newer meter they actually have that 10 amp one fused which you know makes sense I don't know why they would think that uh, they didn't need that fused because it's the same issue right if you uh, put this thing straight across the line and there's no HRC fuse in this leg you know you've got the same issue so I don't know why they would take the precautions to add it on the one side and not do it on the other in the newer meters they replace this fuse with a resistor and I guess that probably keeps this one from rupturing in some of the later meters they show this as a larger body style fuse and then in the newer ones after that it goes back to this smaller case size like we see here so what I was hoping to be able to do is take this R1 which is the fusible resistor and replace that with this surge rated resistor put it in series with the PTC you can see here's our spark gap and you can see that's rated for 1500 volts so I was thinking what we could do is replace that with a gas discharge tube and then maybe reduce the voltage of this one that's across the one meg I don't know if that would have made it any more robust or not but that's typically how other meters are protected you know the fact that this is a spark gap versus a you know a MOV I wasn't too concerned about that uh, obviously with the MOV it's just going to uh, clamp the voltage at some level where the spark gap once it arcs over you basically end up with a very low impedance path to ground and so the voltage at this point here basically becomes zero volts once this thing arcs versus with the MOV it would have to sustain whatever voltage that is and of course these two spark gaps are rated for 1500 volts you're not going to find a 1500 volt MOV so you would probably have to cut the traces and take this common point between the two MOVs, tie these two together, run a third MOV to ground, and that's typically how the meters are protected anyway. Again, this meter is very old. I wasn't expecting it to be very well protected. Again, my first fluke meter, basically it has no protection on it, so this is already a pretty big step up over that meter, and this meter was introduced I don't know probably 10 years or so 12 years after the introduction of mine so they were definitely learning how to make the meters more robust I don't know if that was driven by you know warranty returns customer complaints it's hard to say and you look at the more modern meters that they offer again this is the fluke 189 again this meter isn't new it's been obsolete for many many years and you saw where I took the circuit board from one of these and you know we ran a full set of transients on it and this meter was pretty much bulletproof so they've done a pretty good job learning what it takes to make these meters electrically robust you know again this meter as old as it is uh, yeah the fact that it died on ESD again not too surprising but we see a lot of cheap meters fail that ESD most of them are made by Unity and there's been other brands that have failed as well but the fact that this meter survived 4,000 volts, uh, that's no slouch. We've had a lot of meters that have failed long before that. So, you know, not too bad for the age of the meter, I'd say. Well, I think that's going to be it for this video. For the person who asked to see this grill starter used, hope that uh, satisfies your curiosity. I don't think we can do anything more with the meter at this point, except to return it to the dumpster where it came from. So all for now... Stay safe until the next video. Later.